Hi, this is Jill from HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a CAP analysis, CAP M analysis, uh, but I'm going to do it on um, Warren Buffett's or Berkshire Hathaway's performance data against the uh, S&P 500 accumulation index data. And these data are pulled from uh, Berkshire Hathaway's annual report 2010. So I've got investment performance results, annual uh, performance results from 1965 down to 2010, and that's 46 data points. Uh, that might be on the low end in terms of uh, doing a CAPM analysis, uh, where some people recommend you should have at least 100, 150 data points, usually based on monthly data. I don't have access to that. I think the results that are yielded from the analysis are, are fairly uh, uh, insightful and still uh, interpretable. Uh, whether in terms of statistical significance, uh, I, I suppose that's a little bit more complicated in this context. Uh, but uh, we'll get a good sense of uh, what's going on in the Berkshire Hathaway investment portfolio with respect to performance and outer performance of the S&P 500. So to do the analysis, go into uh, before I continue, I've got, an, I've got uh, year in column one. I've got Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway's performance. Uh, in column two, and I've got S&P 500 data in column three, and each row consists of uh, its respective year's data. Uh, so in 1965, Warren Buffett, I don't, I'm not even sure Berkshire Hathaway existed back then, uh, Warren Buffett's performance was 23.8%, whereas the S&P 500 accumulation index yielded 10% performance. Uh, so to analyze these data for the uh, CAPM analysis, we're going to regression and linear. I'm using SPSS to do this analysis. And uh, we're going to use the S&P 500 as the independent variable and Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway as the dependent variable. And the statistics we're going to have uh, come out of this analysis are the uh, model fit, uh, the estimates for the coefficients. Actually, I wouldn't mind getting the 95% uh, confidence intervals. In fact, I need to do so because I need to calculate the uh, statistical significance of alpha and beta. I've got the Durbin-Watson residuals, which people calculate to determine whether there's an autocorrelation taking place amongst the performance data uh, serially across years. Uh, and we've got uh, descriptive statistics here. I'm going to click so continue uh, and plots. I'm going to plot. I'm probably not going to plot anything actually. I, I just want to do the basic analysis and see what's going on. So I'm going to click OK. So what we've got here is the output. And we can see in the first uh, table we've got Warren Buffett Berkshire Hathaway performance annual. This is not annualized, this is the average performance. Uh, so it's 21.56% average annual performance, and S&P 500 has an annual performance of uh, 10.96. If we look at the standard deviations in the other blocks, in the other column, we can see that despite the fact that Warren Buffett's performance is uh, tw almost twice as great as the S&P 500 accumulation, the actual variability in the performance as measured by the standard deviation is substantially less than the S&P. So Warren Buffett's is 13.9665, whereas the S&P 500 is 17.71. So you expect the opposite. In fact, you expect as n numbers, everything else being equal, as numbers are larger, you expect a larger standard deviation. I'm speaking just in a absolute sense. Uh, but in this case, even though Warren Buffett's got larger values, the standard deviation is actually smaller. And this is, would be a good case of where you should calculate the coefficient of variation, or the coefficient of variance, if I actually squared these standard deviation values and got the variance values. Anyway, this is extremely um, unusual and um, impressive. We've got the Pearson correlation here out outputted by SPSS, and this is going to be um, redundant with some information down below with respect to the uh, standardized regression coefficient. But here we've got the Pearson correlation of 0.578, and if we square that value, it'll give us something like 30%, I believe. In fact, I can calculate this right now, 0.578. 
squared is 33.4%. Uh, so 33.4% per, of the variability in Warren Buffett's uh, annual performance can be predicted by the S&P 500. So uh, Warren Buffett's performance is to some degree uh, corresponding or correlating with the S&P 500. Uh, we have the model summary which is just telling us the uh, similar information, the correlation of 0.578. Oh, well, there you go. The R squared is right there. I didn't have to calculate myself. I just forgot about that. Uh, we've got the R squared of 33.4. We have the Durbin Watson statistic, which is 1.99. Uh, SPSS doesn't calculate a statistical significance value for the Durbin Watson, but we know from a more effect size, qual effect size or qualitative interpretation of the Durbin Watson statistic that if it's anywhere between 1.5 and 2.5, we'd probably conclude that there's no uh, serial correlation or autocorrelation amongst the data, uh, and so we'd feel confident that we can interpret these data meaningfully. We have the F value here in the ANOVA table, which is just telling us the statistical significance of the R value. In this case, it's just a linear regression, so we only have one correlation rather than a multiple correlation, a multiple regression. So the F value is actually going to be the same thing as this T value if you actually square root it. Anyway, we go to the coefficient table. And this is where the main portion of the CAPM analysis t finds itself in the SPSS output. And I'll go to, to beta first. We have the first, the standardized coefficient beta. This is the standardized beta. This is equals the correlation coefficient. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but standardized beta is the correlation coefficient. And SPSS is telling us that the T value to determine the statistical significance is equal to 4.694, and it's statistically significant. So the shared variance, the correlation between Berkshire Hathaway performance and S&P 500 performance, is statistically significant. Here we have the unstandardized beta weight. And this is beta, what people in the finance area conventionally conceive as beta, unstandardized beta. Uh, is 0.45, so it's pretty far from from one. Where when it's one, the conventional interpretation is that the variability or volatility in the performance of the portfolio or the stock uh, is not any different than the benchmark index. And in this case, we have a much lower beta value for Warren Buffett's performance, Berkshire Hathaway. And over here we have the 95% confidence 